Hey, what is up? Welcome back to Science Squad. And in this episode for Action Loop to Master series, I'm gonna answer one of your requests as well as touch one of the new subjects. As you can see, our friend Hadas or Hadas, I don't know how to pronounce your name, sorry, buddy, but he wants to find out how to actually activate audio clips within your prototypes in Action. And let me show you. I'm gonna cover one specific case. And as you can see, I have this sketch mockup, high fidelity resource from Sketch App Sources by Carlos Han. And as you can see, this specific screen I have, this specific view has this play functionality. And I'm just gonna show you how to, you know, trigger a play to begin with. Actual doesn't really have built-in functionality for that. So that's one thing to keep in mind of. However, there are workarounds, and I'm gonna show you exactly one of those hacks. So step by step, I'm just going to copy all the assets into my actual artboards. And I'm using iPhone 8 artboard, as you can see, because that's exactly what mockup is about. Boom. And so we have a simpler presentation of a player. Of course, it's not pixel perfect, but at this point, it doesn't really have to be. I'm going to leave that up to you. So what we're going to do next, we're just going to make this play button activate. And as you know, if you've watched my previous videos, you can just, you know, create a dynamic panel. Let me just make this a pause option. And then I'm going to make another one, which is going to be a play. And of course, the play is going to come first. And inside, what I'm really going to do is just copy one of these triangles. And let me just copy it in the play button really quickly, like so, like this. And that's our play button, let's say. So now I have a dynamic panel of two states. Of course, one thing which you must always do is to give it a name. And let me just invert by just adding a hotspot directions, new interaction on click or tap. Set panel state, play button into pause. And then I'm gonna copy that hotspot to the next state, to the pause state, paste it. And now we're gonna revert back into the play button. Simple as that. And if we preview, that should kind of work. Boom, 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 boom. As you can see, it does make a switch. And now what we're gonna do is just gonna grab a random track from the internet is going to go to Google and find a, a free track. Boom, I have a few tracks here. That's pretty good. What you really need to implement any audio is to have online hosted track like this, for example, as you can see, it's a full URL with .mp3, meaning if you wanna make your prototype, make sure that it's hosted online or you have a link which you can add. So I'm just gonna take that. If I download it and if I want to drag it in, nothing really happens. And that's totally fine because that's just actual functionality. Basically, that's how they approach it. But what we are gonna need to do is to actually add JavaScript. We're gonna be hacking it left and right just to make it happen. There's gonna be some very specific syntax. So Pay close attention, this is paramount. I'm not gonna be able to post the code down below in the description because YouTube is just gonna break apart and it's not gonna let me save. So you're gonna have to pause the video and go bit by bit, character by character, writing it down so it works for you. For every audio file in HTML, in web space, you need the audio player, right? So we're gonna need to initiate it. And what I'm gonna do it is just add it by code. Once it's loaded, we're going to load the audio player, which is going to be invisible for the users, but it's known to you. Maybe just select our existing dynamic panel here. Maybe I'm just going to add an empty one somewhere here and call it a player or something like that. It's it's OK if it's invisible, but we just need it. So it's going to be player this, right? Now, what we're going to do is add interaction, which is going to be named on loaded. And this is basically once we load in the content, do this, right? Load it. And then in the load it, we're going to select open link. In the open link, we're going to select link to external URL. And here is where we can put our JavaScript code. So I'm going to just open this function window. So we have more real estate. And I'm going to paste in my note file. Let me just bring it up, which contains the JavaScript. As you can see, it says JavaScript void. Hey, add the audio player as a new division, as a new div. It doesn't need to make sense if you're not code averse, but all you need to do is that it adds audio controls, which is basically the HTML player to play the sound. And then we're saying source of that audio is this audio URL. That's a mistake by me, but it should be like this audio URL and where the URL is is going to where we're going to paste 
our music sound, our, our audio clip. And then it has a, a message just in case the browser doesn't support the audio format. I'm going to paste this, pause the video so you can actually write it down. The syntax here is paramount. Everything has to be here. I try to keep it as simple as possible, but you're going to see that with this code I have on my screen, I can now open my URL of the actual song as you can see embedded can just go back and just where I have audio URL, I'm just going to paste that link that is going to now be a coded thing. But next, what we're going to do is attach the triggers to our play and pause button. And for that, you're of course going to need an extra code. Of course, it cannot be that easy. And as you can see, so the first one is the play. This is what I would add to my play button. And just to explain very high level what it means, as you can see, we're again calling JavaScript. We're again targeting that hashtag player, which is that idea of a player we appended before and added to our canvas. And then we're saying just play it or just pause it. And accordingly, I'm just going to copy this. And in my play button, where I have this interaction to switch to pause, I also going to add additional um, opening the link, external URL again, and just I can paste it here or open function if I want to click OK. And that's done. I'm just going to copy this statement altogether and just replace play with a pause for our pause button. And just here, I'm just going to paste in. And again, instead of a play, I'm just going to rename that into a pause and it's hard code thing. This is what you need all these three statements player to play to pause the audio clip simple as that. And now if we preview it, if you don't see anything like I just did, I know exactly what's the reason. And that's because we probably misinformed our player. So I'm just gonna go ahead right here and just edit it. As you can see, I have plus plus player, which I named it. However, in my code, I say it's audio player as a label to check out the data source. So all you need to do is really just rename it audio player. So it matches. And if I preview, Boom, as you can see, I have a player. And if we click play, it should work. Cross the fingers. Boom. It does work and it does work well. Of course, you can then drag this. It doesn't have to stay here. You can drag that basically dynamic panel away and just preview again, let's say. And as you don't have to see it and you can just play the sound again and again. And so I would encourage you to just copy exactly what I have on my screen right here. Make sure that you again name your dynamic panel this way. Make sure that you include your audio URL here. Make sure that the syntax is squeaky clean because if it's not, it might not work. Next thing, of course, to do is to make this animate. So, for example, the progress bar down below, you know how to do that. If you don't know, check one of my videos of how to prototype and animate different bits, but it's going to be quite easy. Um, of course, it's going to be a prototype, so it's not going to be fully functional. As long as you just hint that this is a progress, you can at least give a clue to your users. Because if you, let's say, user test it, I wouldn't expect you to play full song. And so this is how you easily do it. A bit of a time jump, but I received a follow up comment to the same case asking basically, hey, how do, would I give instructions? or how would I add voice message to the user? Now, the issue with this, because it's a JavaScript hack, that it couldn't be autoplay. And, and you know, you could, for example, copy that same, you know, uh, open link, yada, yada, to page loaded event, let's say, right here, as you can see, new interaction, let's say, when we load the page, you could paste in that code line preview, but nothing would happen. And that's because this is not enough. Basically, the user must interact with a DOM layer and DOM is basically uh, the JavaScript representation, the rendered layer of elements in HTML space in web space. It has been quite a few generations in the Chrome browsers where they disabled the autoplay. And this, for example, whatever you target with a JavaScript is an autoplay in itself, unless the user clicks a button, and then you launch some sort of audio sequence. And so buddy, you can't really make it an autoplay. But if I were you, I would still play with that play and pause functionality, maybe find some other workarounds. But you must ask your users to click a button to do something It's just unavoidable. Or 
an open question to everyone else. If you know, how would you make it an autoplay option and avoid that Chrome browser loop, which is user initiated, then let us know down in the comments below. As per usual, I hope this video is useful for you. Give thumbs up. If so, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so, because why wouldn't you? And I'll see you next time.